Hello, everybody. My name is Jeremy, and welcome back once again to Scylla Republic, where this week we are working in San Telmo, our second city across the channel from San Felipe. Uh, this week, working on a uh, soccer or football stadium. And uh, before we get too far into the episode, just a little bit of an update on the goings on uh, around here. Uh, So first and foremost, as you are no doubt aware, I have uh, taken a little bit of time off. I'm back now. One of the big catalysts for taking that time off was the uh, Parks and Plaza's DLC update. Uh, As happens every time there's an update in the game, uh, save games get messed up, mods get messed up, and you just kind of have to take a little bit of time off to let all that dust kind of settle, you know, figure out what it is that's going on with your save games, uh, and all that sort of good stuff. In my case, it also happened to very inconveniently coincide with a cross-country move, so I took a little bit more time off than I would have liked, and now I'm getting back to things, I'm getting back to working on the channel, working on all these projects, and... As of right now, as of recording this, which is happening on October the 14th, uh, as of right now, uh, the Scylla Republic save is not functional. Uh, I am working to figure it out. Uh, I really would quite like to. Uh, I love this save. I love this project. I don't want to be done with it. But at present... I can't do anything uh, on it, and unfortunately, in terms of my workflow, this is the last episode that I am able to release. Um, You know, the sad truth is that I have one more fully complete episode in the can, but I don't have a thumbnail for it, so I guess I could release it with, you know, some sort of a generic thumbnail uh, and, you know, kind of call that the last episode. I guess I'll just do that. So this is the second to last episode, uh, assuming that I can't fix the save game, which unfortunately does seem like it's, it's quite likely. Um, but I'm going to keep working on it. I'm going to keep, uh, hammering away at it and try to figure it out because I really don't want to abandon this project. I, I quite like it. I like where it's going. Uh, I'm definitely not starting it over. That's for sure. Um, but we'll see. We'll try to figure it out. I'll keep you posted uh, as the weeks go on. Um, but yeah, that's a shame. <laughs> um, especially because I was halfway through, more than halfway, I was probably three quarters of the way through finishing another episode when the update dropped. Uh, you may not be aware, but the, the update kind of dropped as a bit of a surprise. And uh, it it pushed actually like midway through working on an episode. So, you know, the save might honestly just be corrupted from that. I have no idea. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about what's going on on screen right now. Um, so we've started work on this soccer stadium that, uh, it's not based on any in particular. It's a little bit based on like, the general vibe of a couple of Mexican stadiums that I've seen uh, in real life. It's not like, it's not explicitly based on one though. Uh, What I took inspiration from was kind of the way in which uh, the way in which stadiums sometimes are engaged with hillsides, right? Uh, In this case, kind of all four corners of this stadium are on different levels um you'll kind of see like right now for example i'm working on this little plaza that kind of steps up a couple of meters uh onto street level right and then where the stands are is almost like a full like you know two to three stories up uh to get up to that level and i was just kind of like trying to come up with like fun ways to you know, make this work with the height differences here in San Telmo because it is kind of, uh, it is quite hilly here, you know, as I've pointed out in previous episodes. Um, I really like the way this turns out, though. It kind of, 
uh, it, it, it once everything around it is kind of built up, it, it, it sits in the space really nicely. Um, and I don't know, I think like one of my favorite things to do in the game, one of my favorite things to watch people do in the game, especially is work with height differences. And I think this one is pretty successful personally. Um, and then otherwise, I just kind of like built this kind of ugly little cluster of buildings over in this corner. I didn't really have much of an idea otherwise what to do with that space. Um, it's not my favorite moment in the city, but, you know, it's it's doing its job. It's it's there. It, it looks all right. Um, once everything's built up around it, it, you know, it looks OK. And otherwise, one of the big focuses uh, on this space, uh, on this this stadium, was to kind of create a lot of these sort of gathering areas, these little places where you could picture kind of the buzz around game days. Um, you know, for example, here on this back area, you know, there's no stands on this side. Uh, you know, the field just kind of goes right up to the road. And what I find interesting there is kind of picturing what you know, the culture around this part of the stadium is on a game day, right? Because the wall is like just, just high enough that you can't comfortably watch the game, but just low enough that if you showed up with like, you know, with like a bicycle or a car or whatever to, to stand on top of, you could probably watch the game for free. And I'd imagine there'd be a whole culture of guys who do that. And so that's kind of a lot of what this episode is about, for me anyway, is kind of like the ways in which each of these spaces would be utilized around, you know, around around game days. Uh, like over here, for example, next to this big parking lot, there's this kind of big open terrace uh, that you use to kind of like climb up onto the street level or to get into the bleacher area. Uh, and I put some, you know put some planters around that in, in, in a moment uh but otherwise it's just kind of like a big gathering space that i'm hoping at some point if i can ever get into this save game again if uh if it's not you know irreparably broken i'd like to come back here and put some some kiosks around to kind of show you know a little bit more buzz um you know a couple you know food vendors and stuff kind of like hawking their wares on game day um, and otherwise you saw me kind of place down that little uh, building up at the front. I kind of think of that as being like like a clubhouse or like an office for like the uh, you know the administrative team for the club or something like that. And uh, that's about it for the stadium actually. We're now kind of moving on to the outlying area, this kind of like nearby bit of um, you know more low density housing. Um, and again, we're kind of like dealing with these height differences and these kind of like awkward shapes um, here, just kind of like filling in a bit of the uh, bit of the slum housing. Um, fairly generic, fairly um, you know on par with the rest of what I've done, but it's kind of it, it just makes sense to have this kind of continue on this way uh, next to the highway. And anyway, we're about to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to expand that low density housing a whole lot more. See you then. And we're back. Now, next to the stadium parking lot, um, just kind of expanding out a lot of you know, the low density sort of style that we've done up until now, wide variety of building types and sizes and, you know, just a lot of, um, trying to keep a lot of variety, but still maintaining like a pretty consistent aesthetic sensibility around here. Like, you know, we're out of the old town at this point, so we kind of are losing a bit of that sort of spooky uh, San Telmo vibe that we had been going for previously, but still kind of maintaining a little bit of it, right? As we get closer to the swamp, 
we're looking at older housing. And as we're getting closer to the highway, we're looking at newer stuff. So it's a whole lot of trying to square the circle on that and really get that transition right, you know? Trying to make sure that, like, you can see that there's a, a good, healthy variety of, you know, building ages, building sizes, uh, income levels of the various people who live in this neighborhood. I really wanted it to look, like, fairly mixed. So you see a whole bunch of you know, nicer, bigger houses next to kind of like crummier, more falling apart houses. You see a lot of, um, you know, trying to use stuff like these sheds, for example, to show uh, different different income levels of the different houses, right? And, and, and these fences too, right? Some people have these maintained hedges and some people have these sort of crummier farm fences. And just really trying to drive that home by by giving a good healthy variety it also just happens to make everything look a little better <laughs> that you have you have a wider variety you know um and otherwise it's kind of a lot of a lot of weird shapes to fill a lot of interesting um street shapes around here like the blocks end up being for example this triangle that i'm filling in right now just trying to do all sorts of different geometries for for people's lots to kind of show maybe the different ways that this area was partitioned when it was developed because some of this you know some of this is older than other parts um you know as we get kind of closer to the swamp like i was saying before like the, those are like the older houses these kind of tile top dark houses are, are the older ones that were there for kind of shallow water fishing around that swamp. And then here back in town, uh, we're kind of closer to the highway again, just putting up this kind of big um, government building is what I kind of picture it being anyway. It's like, a, I think in real life, it's a court. I think so. Yeah, I think it's a court. And I'm just picturing it being something for the, something for the city government, you know. Just uh, maybe like this is where the mayor works or something like that. Um, but just pretty straightforward detailing here. It's kind of on a weird slope as everything else around here is. So I'm using these terrain conforming planters to um, kind of hide a little bit of the weird um, sharp hills that have been generated around it. These sort of weird clippy textural quirks that you get from city skylines. But I think it ends up looking really nice. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way that it turns out. Over here, speaking of kind of like the awkward shapes that I have to fill um, here in San Telmo, but this has got to be one of the weirdest, toughest ones. Um, it's sort of a this weird like triangular prism sort of a shape that uh, is on a pretty steep hill and I just, I, I didn't know what to do with it. It did a lot of trial and error that's just not even remotely reflected in the time lapse. You know, I really, I spared you a fair amount of what went into figuring this out. But oddly enough, like even though I was just, you know, tearing my hair out, so frustrated trying to figure this out, I, I end up really liking the way that it ends up, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of chaotic, um, but I think that it, I think it looks really neat, and it kind of like, uh, it it kind of tells a little bit about kind of the way that things work around this city, you know. Just kind of, um, it's a little chaotic. It's a little nasty, but it it gets the job done, you know. That's kind of, that's kind of the vibe around here. Um, and I especially like the way it looks once I kind of turn this platform into parking um, and some cars start parking up here. It really ends up um, really ends up looking nice. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way it, it came together, all told. And I actually really like these buildings, too. These are from, um, I think they're from Israel. I think they're Israeli buildings. Yeah, I, I quite like them. I don't like the way that people float on the side of that road, though. But what are you going to do? I like the way the road looks more than I dislike the way that the walking looks. 
And now over here we have this um, this old church, and this is kind of the last big project of the episode. Uh, I have this old narrow church that, uh, if I can ever get back into this save, I'm very curious what it's going to look like because it uses the uh, building variations mod, which is officially broken and dead and never coming back, I believe. Um, I guess never coming back is my own judgment, but it doesn't seem like it is anyway. But anyway, I, I have this kind of like this old church here on this hillside, uh, this really, really steep hillside, this really narrow church. And uh, I kind of come up with this wacky sort of really chaotic stairway situation to try to try to negotiate uh, the way that people might use this. Um, and I really like it. I think it's it's got so much character. It's got so much personality. And um, I also think that it, its uh, position in the city is interesting, right? Because it's kind of, it's old, it's visibly old, but it's outside of the old town, right? So what was the purpose of this church? Why was it built here the way it was? And I think, you know, it being so close to the swamp and so far back away from the old town, I imagine that it probably... Um, served some sort of a missionary purpose, right? It was because um, we're kind of close to the Duna City now from the last episode, uh, the National Park with the ancient city. So I kind of think that that might have been kind of what the purpose of this was. Um, let me know what you think of that. Do you think that makes sense? Anyway, we are just about coming to the end of the episode so let's get started on some plugs i want to thank you so much once again for spending your friday with me for watching my show for being a channel supporter uh if you want to support me further you can become a channel member for 3.99 a month i think it is uh you get um, you get early access to every episode that I make. You get bonus episodes when I can get around to making them. And uh, also, thanks for 10,000 subscribers. That's uh, uh, a landmark that I completely forgot to acknowledge last week, but I will this week. Thank you so much. Find me on Twitter at, at Jeremy Thunder. Check out my podcast, Generation Loss, and my show on GiantBomb.com, Al Bummer. And I'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.